Hello there, friends. Thank you for joining me again. Before we get started, well, I was a bit disappointed with my last video because I screwed up the title card. It should have said Amiberry instead of Amoebian. Regardless, the developer of DietPy liked it and informed me the Amiberry that was installed in my last video was actually for the Raspberry Pi 1 or 0. It still worked great. Now, according to the developer, by the time this video is published, he will have added support for the Pi 400 with version 6.34, where the Amiberry designed for the Pi 4 will be installed instead. As for my last video, fortunately the installation procedure is going to be exactly the same. In this video, we will be continuing our Diet Pi tutorial. We will be creating a workbench installation on our Windows PC and then moving it to the Diet Pi. Once on the Diet Pi, I will show you how to use it and even set Amiberry to boot right into Workbench when you power up your Raspberry Pi. If you are already familiar with how to create a functioning Workbench install within WinUAE that runs from a folder on your Windows PC, then you can skip this step. For the others, have a seat and let's get started. For this step, you will need WinUAE for Windows and a kickstart file and install disks for your desired version of Workbench. I will be using the latest Workbench released, Workbench 3.1.4. Published by Hyperion Entertainment, I just visited their site to buy, register, and download. Once downloaded, I created a new folder on the desktop and unzipped the download to it. Windows natively supports zip files, so it was just a matter of opening it and dragging the files over. Now we just need to find the kickstart that was in the download. Under ROMs and unsplit unswapped. Here it is. Let's just copy it over to my kickstarts folder. Now you will notice the file extension does not match the other ROMs in this folder. Let's correct this by renaming and simply adding the .rom at the end. Yes, I mean to change it. Now let's start Win UAE and set some things up. I downloaded the A1200 version of OS 314, so let's have an A1200 set up. 4 megs is fine. This is fine. That's fine. Now here we need to select the 314 ROM. Normally you would just see it here, but it looks like we need to load it manually. There she is. This looks good. Skip the floppy section for now and proceed to CD and hard drive. We need to add a virtual hard drive that is simply a folder on our PC. I will create a directory and call it Workbench. Let's make it lowercase. Now we are going to add that directory as a hard drive here. Device name DH0, volume label system, bootable of course. Click select directory and choose our new folder we made. And there we go, a hard drive. Next, we just need to go to floppy drives and find our OS314 folder, where we can see that our download consists of floppy images, very similar to Workbench 3.1. Let's just select the install disk to boot from, activate the second floppy drive, and set the Workbench disk. And we are ready. Click Start.
For some reason, it takes several seconds to get through the kickstart. I'm using a pretty recent version of Win UAE version 4.4. Okay, here we go. The install for 3.14 is identical to 3.1 as far as I can tell. I will fast forward parts of this since a lot of you have done this already. And it's pretty easy anyway. Upon completion, eject the disks and click Proceed. And now we have an Amiga hard drive running from a folder on our PC. At this time, you can repeat the process for as many hard drives as you want and add all of them to your Raspberry Pi using the next procedure. Here we have our thumb drive from the previous video with the Kickstarts folder and a couple of game folders. I'm just going to copy that new 314 Kickstart file. You don't need a Kickstart folder to copy to here. You can copy anywhere as long as you remember where. Just remember to have the .rom file extension mentioned earlier. And our new workbench directory gets copied to the thumb drive too. Repeat this process for any other data that you want to use on the Raspberry Pi. This includes virtual drives like the one we just created, or really any random folder full of your desired Amiga files. This can include disk images or actual Amiga files. Remember, AmiBerry is just like WinUAE, so anything that would load in WinUAE will load in AmiBerry. Now boot up your Raspberry Pi into AmiBerry. Refer to my previous video to learn how to set up this cool Amiga emulator on your Raspberry Pi. We will be mounting and copying files just like we did in the previous video. 
So if you remember how to do this, you can probably skip this step. Once Amiberry comes up, click Quit. Username is root. Password is dietpy. Plug your USB thumb drive into the Raspberry Pi if you haven't already. For easy access to our utilities, type in dietpy-launcher. Select dietpy drive manager and enter. It will scan for drives that are plugged in. Select the drive in the SDA slot, usually SDA1, and in the next screen select Mount. Rename the Mount Point folder to something easy to remember. Since we have this folder from the previous video, we get a warning, but no worries. Hit Escape a couple times to exit Drive Manager. Use Tab or arrow keys to move to the active field. Now we are back to the launcher. We are just going to scroll down to the file manager and select it. Our USB thumb drive is located in a root directory called MNT. So we are going to click the backslash to get back to the root. And here is MNT. This file manager gives us options before entering a directory. The one selected is open, so we just hit enter. And here is our thumb drive. Enter to open. We will start with copying the 314 Kickstart ROM. Enter Kickstarts. Find our ROM. Press Enter and we are given those options. This time we select Copy. Now we just need to go up a couple directories in the chain. Back to the MNT directory and enter the dietpy user data directory. Open, then Amiberry, open, kickstarts, but instead of opening, we will paste our file into this directory. Now back to our USB drive by going up a couple directories again. Oops, I went to the root folder, going back to MNT. USB drive. Going to copy the workbench folder. Up one directory. Into dietpy user data again. I think I will just put it in here. So back up one, select the dietpy user data again, and instead of opening, choose paste. So that completes our copy operation. We just need to exit the file manager and go back to the drive manager to unmount the USB stick. If you are thinking you could just leave the USB stick in the Raspberry Pi instead of copying files and simply access it via Amiberry directly, why yes, you can. However, in my mind, I would rather use the USB stick elsewhere instead of trapping it in the Pi. And moreover, if you remove it or move it to another USB port on accident or otherwise, you will have problems, such as Amiberry failing to load for missing kickstarts or the drive manager locking up because of a broken mount point. Trust me, I know. Now, simply reboot your Raspberry Pi and we will proceed to the next step. Once the Pi boots into Amiberry, we just have a few settings we want to change from the default. Set the processor to a MIDI 68030. Math coprocessor, why not? And fastest CPU. AGA chipset. Let's pick our ROM.
Amiberry Kickstarts. There it is. Give ourselves more RAM. Set our floppies for turbo. And load our workbench directory as a hard drive, very similar to the way we did it in Win UAE. I always recommend horizontal and vertical centering in the displays section. And we need those floppy drive sounds, of course. And go to configurations to save these settings. As long as you name your configuration default, it will be loaded when you start the Pi. Let's just click start to see what we get. And we are good. That brief message that was up for a second was warning about me setting a 68030 processor. If you notice the ROM's file name, it is the version for an A1200, and it of course expected a 68020 with no MMU. The one remaining item is, can we boot straight to Workbench on PowerUp? The holy grail of making our Raspberry Pi a seamless emulator for an Amiga? Why yes. If we just press F12 to go back to the Amiberry control, and in the miscellaneous section uncheck the Show GUI on Startup, then resave our default configuration, that should do it. Let's reboot to make sure. I will just quit Amiberry and simply hit Control Alt Delete to reboot. And there we are. Every time we turn on the Raspberry Pi, we get Workbench in about 13 seconds. And on the Raspberry Pi 400, it's like we have a mini supercharged Amiga 1200. Thank you for joining me, and we will see you on the next one.